treason has long been a crime punishable in the most heinous of ways, and its definition is often conveniently twisted by governments. Organisations and individuals who leak the many disturbing things governments do behind their citizens' backs are swiftly dealt with, and the leaks swiftly taken care of. Only, however, have a particular unsettling method of dealing with leakers, traitors, or anyone who crosses them. A highly top secret facility known only by those unfortunate enough to be taken there. This is the disturbing reality of Oni's Midnight Facility. In the distant future of the Halo universe, how humanity deals with prisoners has expectedly changed. As the human population rose, naturally, so did the number of convicts. This led to the creation of penal colonies, planets or sections of planets dedicated entirely to the storage of prisoners. Here, they're forced into hard, gruelling labour, mining ores or working in industrial factories for long hours and low pay under the orders of the United Earth Government. However, despite this, no known penal colony or prison facility will ever come close to the torture convicts suffer at the hand of Oni's most skilled experts at Midnight Facility. Located within an asteroid belt, Midnight Facility is built inside an asteroid, hidden away from the openness of space and tucked between asteroids, making it near impossible for large ships to aid in a breakout. Hidden among the belt are defences, supposedly enough to defend the entire facility from a whole Covenant fleet. Policing and defending the facility from the inside is an elite security force, and in charge of the whole operation is a highly intelligent female AI, very likely a smart AI. Midnight Facility differs from other penitentiaries in that it wasn't a facility built to reform prisoners or to prepare them for their release back into the regular wide world. It was built to make them disappear. The facility itself is isolated, desolate. The hallways are long, repetitive and silent except for the white noise emitted by the glowing of the lights, each emitting a bright glow, and all of the cells are identical. These features combine to instantly invoke a subtle form of distress when experienced for a prolonged period, as a prisoner or just as a visitor. The cells are where things get really disconcerting. Rather than conventional prison cells with bars, convicts are kept in brightly lit windowless cubes, complete with a bed, a toilet and a one or two way viewing panel, allowing for people outside to see inside the cell. Prisoners are kept in prolonged solitary confinement, which, combined with the bright lights, background white noise and the inability to perceive the passage of time, acts as a form of psychological torture, constantly digging away at your mind and your sanity, ultimately sending most prisoners clinically insane. Reports from one notable prisoner revealed that after some time in his cube, his dreams began to only take place within the cube which blurred the line between dreams and reality, locking him in a permanent state of not knowing whether anything was actually real. If the prisoner does enter a fit of insanity or rage or any other extreme emotion, peaceful music can be played to calm them down, or alternatively, gas can be emitted to knock them out. Although, despite this, traces of these fits constantly remain. Oftentimes, bloodstains can be seen standing out from the white of the cell from its prisoner's last outburst each exacerbating their insanity more than the last. However, it isn't just humans stored in Midnight. This facility is for anything that crosses Oni's path and tries to disrupt their plans. A Covenant Prophet, codenamed Denver by Oni, was captured around 2552 and stored in cell 56 of the Lambda cell block after escaping the flood-infected High Charity. He was interrogated by Oni agents in 2558 about Cortana's possible infection by the Logic Plague. Gek La, an elite responsible for a significant terror attack on Earth in 2557, was detained in Midnight as well. Gek, however, did manage to escape the facility, killing multiple in the process, and then proceeded to rise up the ranks to become Jullum Dharma's right-hand elite. 
Captain Cutter's son, Daniel Clayton, is also being detained at midnight. Lord Hood felt responsible when the Spirit of Fire went missing, and subsequently Daniel's father as well, so he secretly fed him money throughout his life, something that angered Daniel when he found out. By this point, he was a captain in the UNSC, and when he joined the Insurrectionists, he looked to use this power to get vengeance on Hood. Ultimately, after siding with the elite and human rebels, and being responsible for the death of many friendlies, including Spartans, and almost the destruction of the UNSC Infinity, Clayton was captured and hauled off to midnight, where he'll spend the rest of his days. Despite some of these prisoners being legitimate threats to the good of humanity, let us not forget that among them are likely many good, honest people who simply got too close to the truth. One prisoner in particular, a journalist, who came this close to leaking the dark reality of the Spartan 2s, children kidnapped and tortured by Oni, currently resides in this facility, faced with the same psychological torture as those who attempted to kill millions. Midnight Facility is just one example of many that demonstrates the lengths that Oni will go to to protect themselves, from those who wish to cause significant harm to humanity and to those who simply wish to know the truth. And that is how Oni deals with terrorists, traitors, and any normal human being that wants to leak the secret, dark atrocities they've carried out. I hope you guys enjoyed, and, well, if you didn't, then don't worry, I'll, uh, I'll speak to some of my boys at Oni, and I'll get them to take you to some place where they'll force you to enjoy it. I'm just kidding, of course. Or am I? Anyways, reminder that the giveaway for the official Iconic Throne is still going on. I'll be announcing the winner in the next video on August 28th, so just hit the link at the top of the description to enter. Thank you to everyone supporting me on Patreon, Ardent, Tomahawk, Taylor, Evan, Momo, Shikata, Mjolnir, Matthew, Pierre, Tony, Ben, Jim, Reagan, Quantum, Jack Madden, Eric Brown, Sam Grafton, Bruin98, and Hayden Woods. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys and I'll catch you in the next one.